So what I wanted to talk today about is um, GMS service virtualization. So my name is Wojciech, I've been doing software development for more or less 10 years. And I wanted to, so I don't know who's in the room today and I'm going to keep it quite uh, basic from my point of view, but it's going to be basically an introduction to JMS service virtualization and that's the key takeaway I would like you guys to have today that if you haven't seen that stuff like this yet, um, you're going to know, see an example of how it could look like and we're going to go through an example of how you could actually do it and yeah, so that's, that's my hopefully uh, takeaway for you guys that you're going to realize, all right, you might do that, that stuff actually for JMS as well. Um, and another thing I wanted to assume is that uh, we in here know more or less what test doubles are, service virtualization, mocking, stabbing, all those things, so that I don't have to go into the details. And we're just going to keep it short and simple, uh, dive straight into what is, uh, how we can do the JMS bit. So a quick JMS refresh to start with. So JMS is an asynchronous API for asynchronous communication. So um, if you're doing HTTP, um, you're going to send a request and you're going to synchronously wait for a response. HTTP 200, HTTP 404, but you're synchronously waiting for that response. What happens in JMS is um, if you're going to be talking to a server via a JMS API, you're going to send a message and that's basically it. So in JMS, there's two kind of modes of communication. The first one is point to point, which is um, a client is going to be sending a message and the arrow points. Um, like shows how the message is sent, which direction the, the, the message goes. Um, the client is going to be sending a message uh, onto a queue, and then another client is going to be consuming messages off that queue. And I think worth pointing out is there's no time bed dependency between uh, those events. So uh, client one can send whenever, client two can consume whenever, and the queue is just going to be storing those um, uh, in the meantime. And we got publisher, subscriber, so um, topics. Um, a client is going to be publishing messages to a topic and we're going to have one or more subscribers to the topic and um, they're going to be consuming the messages from, from the topic. Um, uh, the difference uh, here is uh, that there is a time dependency so you can only see the messages that you have that have been published after you have subscribed. And one more uh, quick look at from a different angle so as I was saying JMS is only an API so we're going to have many um, implementations, for example, ActiveMQ, ABMQ, many other ones, and they're going to have, they're going to provide an API on top of, uh, an API you can use to call them, and uh, via JMS provider is going to be a JMS API. So is everybody more or less with me so far? I'm, I'm worried that I'm like shooting, you know, blind with the audience, and I don't know if, if I'm, I'm talking about something we more or less, you more or less know what I'm talking about. All right, see nothing has cool. Um, so let's have a look at a simple, in my opinion, but we'll, we'll see, I've been doing that for too long probably. Um, uh, example of recording a queue, and we're gonna have a um, hypothetical uh, situation where there's gonna be two systems communicating and they're gonna be sending a request message and a response message, and we're gonna see how you can do a record and replay. So this is a hypothetical situation, which we see in real life. And you're going to have a system A that sends a request message to a broker, that's arrow number one. Um, then um, system B is going to consume that message, arrow number two, do some processing, and after a while it's going to send a response message, arrow number three, to the response queue uh, on the broker. And afterwards, uh, system A is going to consume that response message, arrow number four. So this is a hypothetical example. but. Uh, quite often happens in real life. So in order to record that, we're going to do something similar to HTTP, but, um, but a bit different. Um, uh, proxy messages and record them in the meantime. So what we're going to have is the white stuff um, is from the previous um, slide. And we got this um, blue bit, the virtual service bit in the middle. So what's going to happen is um, system A is going to um, send a request message to the virtual service uh, request queue. Um, then the message is going to be consumed by the virtual service and the virtual service is going to say, ah, I've got the request message, I'm going to remember that. Um, then uh, the virtual service is going to forward the message to uh, the request queue on the original production broker, sorry, the, uh, the, the, the real broker. Uh, that's arrow number three. Arrow number four, the system B con um, consumes that message, does some processing. After a while, it sends the response message, uh, that's arrow number five, to the response queue on the original broker. Arrow number six, virtual service consumes that 
response messages and uh, it uh, f uh, notices that, okay, I've had a request message, now I've got a response message, how about I uh, create the mapping for those? So R number seven creates a uh, mapping for this type of request, I'm gonna be producing these types of responses. That's, uh, that is what I have seen. And then it forwards the same message to the, um, origin, uh, to the virtual service broker, which is R number eight, and then system A consumes that response message R number nine. So once we've recorded something, we want to use it. So to, to, we're going to replay those messages and hence be able to test our system in isolation. So uh, we got our system A, which is our system under test. That's the bit we're testing. And it's going to send a, a request message, arrow number one, to the request queue, which is the virtual service. So sorry, um, the bits that's missing here was on the right, which is the real uh, broker and system B. So those bits are missing. We're just using the uh, virtual service infrastructure uh, to uh, test uh, system, system A, the system under test. So um, system A sends a request message to the virtual service broker, to the request queue. Uh, virtual service consumes it, uh, looks at the mappings and matches it against something. It founds a match and uh, produces, creates a uh, response message. That's arrow number four, sends it to um, the response queue and then system on the test uh, consumes that our, our number five. So in this way, we are able to test our um, system A, system on the test in isolation in this hypothetical um, example. So I wanted to have a look at an example of how we could do that with A2, so it's not that dry. So this so far was, you can do it with any tool really. I wanted to have an, uh, you know, uh, something that you can actually do at home if you wanted to, if, if it makes sense for you. So what we're going to do is use, um, we don't want to make it too complicated. So system A and system B, we don't want to you know, create systems to demo this stuff. So I'm going to pretend to be those systems by using Hermes GMS. That's a uh, tool that allows you to um, consume and send messages. So I'm pretending to be system A and system B. Uh, we're going to use ActiveMQ for the broker, and for the virtual service, we're going to use Traffic Pirate with an ActiveMQ instance running internally. So let's go ahead and look at that. So first of all, we need to start up those things. So, um, okay, this has, um, can you guys see that in the back? Large enough font? Cool. Um, first of all, start Hermes. We got Hermes here. Then we're gonna start. I've got traffic power downloaded here, so I'm just gonna unzip it. There it is, it's unzipped. Go to the directory and start it up. Look at the logs just in case. It's a live demo, you never know. Yeah, everything seems fine. And then we're going to start the um, external, sorry, the, the local active and queue instance. So we've got all of those things started up. Um, sorry. Uh, now what we want to do is wire up this recording. So what we're going to do is uh, arrows two and three. Uh, we're going to set up the recording so that the virtual service consumes stuff from an internal broker that it's set up and forwards it to the uh, request queue on the original broker. So let's go ahead and do that. So I get traffic part here. There we go. Um, GMS record. I'm going to start up an internal broker on the port, on port 1991. We're going to record the queue and we're going to uh, record from the internal broker record queue to local active MQ in the same queue name. If you want to know how to configure these things, you just click this um, question mark and it's going to tell you how to do that. And then, so we got two and three and the virtual service internal broker um, uh, done for now. Now we need to do six and eight, which is uh, consume from the local ActiveMQ instance and forward it to the internal broker. So let me do that. 
forward to internal broker, turn it on. Yeah, it started, all looks good. Um, and we got the mappings and current recording session here. So we can start playing messages. So what I'm going to do is pretend to be system A using Hermes GMS and send a request message to the request queue. That's arrow number one. Okay. Request queue, new message, payload, let's say request one. Okay, so now what we expect is the virtual service should have noticed the request message and it should be also forwarded to the request queue on the original broker. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, th there we go. It's, it's there on the current recording session, a request message and the text that we've just input. And we can use Hermes GMS to look at the local instance, which is this guy of ActiveMemeQ on the request queue should have that message. Yes, there is request one. So now uh, I'm going to pretend to be system B, consume that message and produce a response message. So I'm consuming this guy by deleting it and producing a message to the response queue. There we go. So what should have happened now is um, the virtual service should have noticed it and we should see something on the response queue in the uh, virtual service broker. So let's have a look at that. Uh, going back to this page. Yeah, so we see a response message RSP1 and we've got a uh, mapping as well. So uh, if you see something on the request queue, on a queue request queue and the request is equal to our request one, respond to this queue with this text uh, message. So yeah, um, there was there was a recording. Um, um, now we can go to replaying and test our system, which is going to be me again. Uh, so I'm assu we're assuming that I'm the system under test actually, and I'm testing Hermes JMS basically. Uh, so we're going to replay the traffic that we've just recorded. So to do that, first of all, we need to start the um, replay. So I have already stopped this guy. So I'm going to replay. We're going to start the internal broker again. We're going to replay only queues and it's internal to internal. There we go. And we're going to be replaying this mapping that we've got there. So again, go to Hermes GMS, start it up. Okay, so again, pretending to be system A, uh, sending arrow number one, sending the request message. Um, that's the internal broker. So this guy. So what we should see now is something on the response queue on the local broker. And there it is, is the response that we have recorded. So one more thing we can do actually is, let's, let's pretend to be system A and consume this guy by deleting it. Um, but one more thing we can do is uh, actually, just to show you that it's actually working, I can change this response to something else. Um, yes. Um, start up this guy again. Send a request message again, pretending to be system A. And now we expect something on the response queue. And there we go, that's the guy that we were expecting. So yeah, that was pre that's pretty much it. But um, just to reiterate, so I was, you know, We've recorded something, then we've replayed it. And as I was saying, um, that's a simple example, um, I hope. 
And you know, this was about to give you, um, my, my point was that I wanted to give you uh, an intro of how GMS service virtualization could look like, that you could do, for example, a record and replay. And if you want to, you know, if, if you've got problems that service virtualization start being mocking, test double, solve, and you want to do this kind of stuff on a larger scale, um, uh, go ahead and recess that. And um, yeah, so um, yeah. Um, if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to take them. And also, um, I'm always happy to have a discussion and a chat. I'm always happy to learn what, what uh, you guys think. Um, as I know, um, 